Hey y'all! Alright, so now we're going to actually be segueing into a uh, uh, kind of negative portion of our videos. So this is what you should not do in your 3D models. Now uh, I mean no offense for those people's uh, STL files who I'm going to present right now, but I'm going to showcase a few STL files from my recent class that I taught. And, um, yeah, alright, so let's begin. So, you'll notice that this doesn't look quite like Tinkercad, it's because it's not Tinkercad. So, uh, but a lot of the controls and everything will be the same, and I will guide you through each of the portions so that you know which one it corresponds to in Tinkercad, okay? So, this is actually Microsoft 3D Builder, it's included with Windows 10, and, um, so this is just a starting page of Microsoft 3D Builder. As you can see, you don't really see the work plane as you do in Tinkercad, right? The work plane would just be, on Tinkercad, would just look like this square, right? Just extending over here, like this. But right here, you don't really see a square, you just see measurements. That's because, that's just how 3D Builder does it. But this surface with this checkerboard pattern, this is the workspace, the quote-unquote workspace of Microsoft 3D Builder. Now there's also different controls if you want to try this yourself um, and if you have a Windows 10 computer. So in order to rotate you actually just press down using your left mouse and so you just kind of rotate it around like this. And There's no viewing cube like in Tinkercad. And then in order to pan or to move it like side to side then you just use your right mouse click. So then this kind of just moves it side to side. So it's actually much easier to use in Tinkercad. Oh right right and zoom is just the same. So it's zoom in and zoom out using your scroll wheel, right, or using your touchpad, using the pinch or uh, push apart method. All right, so now let's examine our first one. So I'm just going to click over here, add in the upper left-hand corner, load an object. Here is already all of the different ones that I already went through today, but uh, well, let's just go ahead and do it again. So load object. Okay, so this is my drive, this is, or this is my hard drive, and here is the thing. So, uh, first one is 126094LL, and so this is one of my students' files, and let's go ahead and click open. It says loading file. Alright, so, now, what do you notice is wrong about this? Right. So, when you're 3D printing it, the printer doesn't really like surfaces that are apart from each other, right? So, as you can see, as we begin from top to bottom, you see this ring looks fine, and nothing's floating above the surface, that's a biggie. If anything's floating above the surface, then the 3D printer will like basically print an empty air, and of course that's not good. So, everything looks fine, the Mickey Mouse looks fine, although a little bit elongated, but it's okay. Then the ring looks fine, but then here, we have a little bit of problem here. The D kind of goes beyond the ring, the outside ring, right? So let's see, how to fix this? Well, what we could do, number one, is to get another D and put it in here. Oh, no, no, to first fill us up with the cube and then merge everything, and then go ahead and put in another D that's farther away. But then you would have to worry about the entire letters. So what I'm going to do in this case to repair it is I'm going to put a wider rim around it using a torus shape. So let's go ahead and click Import Model. In Tinkercad, you won't have to do this. It just automatically does it for you. Now what I'm going to do is use the torus shape. In Tinkercad, you can just find this under Basic Shapes if you scroll down. So I click Torus. It gives me this nice torus shape. Now, as you notice, it's not very centered. And the problem with Microsoft 3D Builder is that you don't really have a center option or a line option. Now in Tinkercad, what you would do is that you would go like this, highlight everything, is that you would use your left mouse click, highlight everything on the screen, and then go ahead and click the line button that would be somewhere up here, right? And then you would click the little gray things and, to make it red, and then align everything. Now, the problem with Microsoft 3D Builder, as before stated, you can't do that. So we're, we're just going to have to improvise. So I'm just going to eyeball it right now. Uh, just kind of move this somewhere in the center. Good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it out using these things. So, and, okay, so when you have objects selected in Microsoft 3D Builder, you would normally first see this. What this little icon means is you, you can move the object. So you can either move the object using when it shows a hand, 
then just move it back and forth like this, up side to side, even diagonal, in any direction. And if you rotate it sideways, so you're looking like this, then you can also move it up and down, right? Okay. So that's pretty simple. But then you also have rotate down here, so you just click this one right here, and then you can go ahead and rotate it like that. And then after that is scale. So this scale is what I'm going to do right now. These little fast forward arrows are just basically you can extend it or you can like, yeah, anyway, you can extend it or you can do otherwise. So let's go ahead and first center it. And the cool thing about Microsoft 3D Builder is that you can still move stuff around while you're scaling it. So it kind of helps. So let's kind of eyeball the center. It's about right there. And we're going to just extrude it sideways, just kind of stretch it sideways using these little handles. Just eyeball it. And then go ahead and on this side and on that side. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check all the sides, make sure that's somewhat OK. Actually, yeah, this side is missing a little bit, so I just move it down a little bit. Whoops, not that way. Uh, OK, so it looks pretty good right now. Looks kind of like a donut frosting, ha, 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 funny joke, okay, whatever. Anyway, so now we have this, but the problem is, is that the horse is a little bit too wide, right? Because if I just merge everything together right now, it will look like a horrible mess. So what we're going to have to do now is actually move this over to the side. So let's move over to this to the side. And then so you have this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cylinder to cut a hole in the middle of this to make it a little bit um, less wide. Let's go ahead and take the cylinder, move it approximately to the center, and then look from above to see if it's actually centered. All right. And what's also nice about Microsoft 3D Builder is that it attempts to make, it attempts to guess what you're going to do next. Like right there, it just guessed that I was going to try to make it centered, so then it kind of snapped to it. Alright, so here we can kind of see that's a little bit too wide. The the torus is still a little bit too wide, so we're going to move it out further. Uh, right about there, and right about there. Now, let's look at it from this side, and it still looks fat, so we're going to have to do it this way, and that way. Now, a trick for at least a Microsoft 3D Builder uh, making sure that everything is okay and aligned properly, like the center is aligned properly, is you look at the widths. So right now it's not really aligned properly because this part is higher than these parts. So we're going to have to go over here and then kind of make this one a little bit longer. There. That looks not so bad to me right now. It looks pretty nice. Oops, maybe a little bit more on this side. All right, that's good. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to use the subtract tool. The subtract, so it's the, the, the subtract tool in 3D Builder can be found under Edit and then Subtract. Now, what I found about using Microsoft 3D Builder is that the subtract tool, it only like, it's weird because you, you actually select the object that's going to be subtracted, that's going to be I guess the subtracting factor from the other one. So in this case, if I clip subtract right now, the equation would be the torus minus the cylinder. You get it? If I click the torus, then it would be the cylinder minus the torus, which would actually not make that much difference. Anyway, whatever. So now since I got the cylinder selected, I want to make a hole in the center of the torus. So then let's go ahead and click subtract. Sometimes this process takes a long time. Sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it did it. Uh-oh. Now you see a problem, right? What's the issue? Well, I actually didn't move my cylinder all the way down to ground level. So let's go ahead and do that. Control Z is the same, or it can go up to undo or redo, just the same in Tinkercad. All right, now we're going to have to translate it down so that's touching. Now this is what's nice about... Um, so it's nice about Microsoft 3D Builders. Uh, also, like if I move it all the way up here, but then once I get close to zero, then it kind of actually prompts me. Like this, it's right sitting on top, and if I go down more, then it automatically puts it under. Actually, I'm going to have to look from below. <laughs> all right. 
that's good. Now, I also just noticed that my Taurus is actually below, so that's why, that may have been causing the problem. So let's select our Taurus, move it upward. There, perfect. All right, now we can select our cylinder and then go ahead and click subtract. Hmm, still the same issue. Oh, my torso is still below. This is very interesting. Actually, I'll just keep the torso above. This is fine. All right. Click it. Alright, so here's a little loading bar, please wait. And now we have our little circle. Alright, very thin, this is nice. Now to check if it's okay, you just kind of use the pan tool, right click, move it around, look at it from the sides. Now right now this ring looks pretty even, so I'm just going to keep it at that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move it right over here. And again, this calls for some eyeballing. Hey, but I think I actually got it first time. Well, that's a first. All right, now what we're gonna do is gonna move it down. Kinda looks like a little coffee cake now. I'm actually going to move it a little bit down. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It actually doesn't look quite good now, does it? Let's look at it from a lower standpoint. Alright, I think that looks pretty good to me. And then a nice little cake rounded bit around it. Now what we do is that, okay, so in Tinkercad you could just drag it across the select. You could left click and then drag across and that little, uh, that little red rectangle would appear, right? In Microsoft 3D Builder, you can't do that. The only way to really select all the shapes is to go here and say select all, right? So I'm just going to select all objects in the scene. The scene is basically the work plane. And then the, the bottom of that is deselect all and sticky selection. Sticky selection is interesting because Tinkercad doesn't have this. Basically what sticky selection is, is that when you click something and then you click another thing, they'll both be selected. So it's the same in Tinkercad as if you're holding down the control key, which selects more than one object, right? Whatever you click on. So now we're going to go over to Edit, then go to Merge, and this basically does the group, the group um, function in Tinkercad. So I'm going to just go ahead and click Merge. All right, so it's all merged together into one STL file. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's move it back to the surface. Yeah, so let's do one final check before we go on to the next one. All right, good, 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 very close. Very good, very good, close. This is at exactly sitting on top of the surface, and it looks fine. All right, that concludes our first one. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to save it. Go ahead and save as. And then, what's nice about Microsoft 3D Builder, you don't actually have to merge everything on this scene. It'll automatically save it all as one 3, uh, STL file. Microsoft 3D Builder has also its own standard, not STL, it's called 3MF. But we're just going to go ahead and save an STL. We're going to call it fixed. Fixed. And then go ahead, we're going to go ahead and click save. And some information will be lost when saving in this format. Choose .3MF to save everything. And in uh, my experience, 3MF STL, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. It may be just Microsoft Spiel to, you know, get you to save everything in 3MF, right? Get their monopoly. So just click, go ahead and click save. Saving over here. And all right, it's saved. So that's it. That's it. So right now I'm just going to create a new scene, new scene, and I'm going to go on to the next one. Load another object. So fixed is right here, so that's good. Now I'm going to show you 
a few good examples. Starting with, let's go ahead and go to Aileen, or Aileen. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Let's go ahead and click open. Now you'll soon see why this is a good model. First of all, everything is centered properly, right? The Mickey Mouse is centered, the name is centered. This is a very good model, actually. Right, right, very good, very good. Everything is together, everything is on the surface of the work plane, so then the printer won't be printing in midair. This is a, actually a very good model, right? All right, so how would you make a model like this? Well, first of all, what you would do is make sure before adding anything else to the work plane, make sure that everything is sitting right flush with the work plane, unless you purposely do not want it to, right? And then also make sure that when you're grouping everything together, especially a bunch of objects, make sure that they're all in the right positions before doing so, or else it'll cause you a lot of hassle. And um, also, uh, what else? Right, make sure that your letters are all in line, all in place. And yeah, that's basically all it. And um, yeah, all right, so this is a good model. Now we're going to skip a few more good models. Again, no offense intended to those very good students. Let's go ahead and go to another one that needs work needs work so code bot go ahead and open it now this one will actually turn out fine in a print the only thing again is that the B is a little bit too close to the edge so I'm not going to do it now because I already demonstrated it but you but but when you're making the SCL files again Sorry, when you're designing it in TigerCAD, again, you have to make sure that your letters aren't touching the edge. If they are touching the edge, then try to make them less wide. In order to do this in TigerCAD, you would move all the letters out, select all the letters first using the control key, and then selecting each of the letters, then group all of them into one piece, and then move them off the entire model, on the, off to the side of the work plane. And then go ahead and just use the little handles on the sides to make them closer together. Tinkercad will preserve the proportions between all of the letters, so that's nice. So, and then you just drag it right back in here, do all your align stuff, right? And then it should be fine. So, right, yeah, so this is the exact same correction procedure as for the other one. Just take a torus and then put the cylinder in the middle and then go ahead and make a hole in the center of the torus and then place it over the edge so it provides a nice ring around it and your 3D printer will thank you for it. Alright, let's go ahead and look at another one. So we just did CodeBot. Let's go ahead and go to Melia. See what's wrong with this file. Okay, this is actually an extremely simple fix as you should have seen very quickly. A 3D printer, when it sees this, it will freak out, especially if it's printed at this at the scale of one, meaning it's printed at exactly this size. Because most printers don't have a bed that's this wide. So the 3D printer will literally be printing over the edge of the bed, which it can't do, and therefore it will be spewing filament everywhere. You don't want that. So it's a very simple fix. All we gotta do here is just put a cube And then go ahead and make it so that it, it goes over all of this stuff. And we're just going to subtract it from everything. So let's go ahead and just expand it to so it's really big. Again, remember, as in Tinkercad, it doesn't matter if it's really huge. Because you're just basically, it's going to be gone anyway. So now everything is down to surface, so we won't have any issues. Let's go to edit, and then subtract. Okay, we're seeing some issues here. Let's re see what's the matter with these issues. Oh. Okay, I see the issue. It may or it may be that 
It may be that some of the letters are actually poking below the surface. We'll investigate it further. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm just using the pan tool right now. So... Okay, so they should all be fine now. I'm just going to move this below the surface of everything. Oh boy, sorry, I just selected all the objects. Uh, we'll go ahead and deselect all the objects and just move the cube down. Okay, now we can click subtract. Oops, ha, 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 I'm funny. I forgot to move it over to the side, so I'll just move it over to the side a little bit. No, not that part. Okay, I need to deselect. deselect. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all you viewers out there. It's taking a bit long. Okay, everything is gone. This is good. All right. I do see one problem here. Do you see the problem? Now, if you look up from the side, ooh, this thing is paper thin. Paper thin, I'm telling you. This is way too thin. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to move it upwards. So it looks better. And it'll print better. And it won't break. Alright, so we're going to save this as fixed. You see, repairing is not that hard. It's really not that hard. So save in the STL format. And again, say save to its warning. Couldn't export that. Ha, huh, I'm sorry, I think I partially lied. Um, when you're using Microsoft 3D Builder, it sometimes gives a glitch when you try to save it in a file format other than STL. So I, yeah. So let's go ahead and just save it in 3MF. It doesn't really matter actually, because most 3D printers allow it. So I just saved it already in 3MF. You see what happens if you try to save an STL? Oh yes. Save. Oh, that's weird. Okay, whatever. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, it's all good. No errors thrown this time. That was weird. All right, next one. So the last one was Melia. So let's go ahead and go to Rick Lantis, and this is our last one. Wait a second. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, now, what do you see that's wrong about this? Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now. So, the O, the middle of the O, it's not connected with anything. Meaning that it's not going to, It's okay, the 3D printer is going to attempt to print the O. So, although this isn't really a big problem, because when you print this, this is still just going to end up with the M O M with the M with nothing in, with O with nothing inside of it, and then just this one little piece sitting in the middle. So I mean, nothing really wrong with this. And but there's a real problem, and that is that this keychain is a little bit thin. The third problem is that the M again is too close to the side. Again, this is you do the torus and then you make a circle in the middle of it, and then you just put this around, right? Let's go ahead and just fix the width. So fixing the width is quite simple again. Let's go ahead and do this. And eh, just about like that. And, and we have a problem here. This is a little bit too tall. Let's go ahead and just put a cube there. Move it up by a little bit. What I'm gonna do is gonna slice off this portion. Move the cube up make the cube a little bit larger look at it from the side zoom out a bit 
And then move the cube down. Move it to the side. So now it's sitting right on top of that. Actually, I want to slice a little bit more off. Right about there. Yeah, that looks good. So we're just gonna do edit, subtract. Hey, looks good. That's the right height. Now what we're going to fix is this little anomaly right here. So this is also a simple fix. We just go ahead and insert a cylinder. Make it bigger. Zoom out a bit. Look at it from above. So left mouse click on Windows 3D Builder. Move it. And then so we're just going to try to cover that up as best as we can. I think that looks pretty good. Go to... And just because we've had a lot of issues, let's just go ahead and move this down a bit so that there's no possibility that any portion of this portion being cutting out will still appear. Click subtract. Okay, so this will ha this is how it will look on the print bed, all in one piece, and uh, of course with a little ring around it, which I won't show because we've. You guys already know how to do that. You guys are experts. All right, this is good. Let's go ahead and save this again as fixed. Now, do I want to try saving an STL? Yeah, let's try it. See if it gives me an error. Okay, let me try it again. Okay, alright. I'll just go ahead and save it in 3MF. Odd. Very odd. Oh, sorry, I just paused the recording and then I just saved it in STL and it seems to be fine. Maybe there's something wrong with the computer itself. So. I'll just demo it to you again. Save as. Just click S. Oops, sorry, I clicked OBJ. STL. Save. Yes. And save. Yeah, alright, no errors. So, this concludes our what not to do video for Tinkercad, now shown in 3D Builder. And, um, hope you like, subscribe, and. See you guys later. Bye-bye.